Okay, guys, first you have this simplified heart with its SA node depicted. And we're gonna see all of these heart, sections of heart, uh, through lead 2, which you see its direction. Okay, at the first stage, our heart is all polarized. So, the surface of SA node is all positive. Because the all cells are at rest, and at rest, all uh, the surface is positive. Once our SA node in stage 2 starts to trigger our electric pulse, uh, the distribution of different charges will be like this. I mean, the electrical uh, current will be in this direction, from negative to positive. So, in the first stage, which uh, we have all positive charge on our uh, surface of atrium, the uh, isoelectric line is marked as the first stage, right? This is our first wave. In the second stage, where you see we have an electric uh, current, we are going to have this depolarization wave, you know, because the uh, direction of our vector is like lead 2, so we're going to have a positive wave. The peak of this wave is uh, going to be reached when we have half negative charge, half positive charge in the syncytium of our atrium. The next stage is clear. Uh, the dissemination of uh, the electric pulse uh, continues, and then we have all negative charges on the surface of our atrium. In this stage, again, we don't have any electric uh, current, so again, electric the isoelectric line is charged. So this is our second stage, and this is our third stage. The last stage is very important. You know, if we consider A as the first cell to be depolarized, and this B cell as the last cell to be depolarized, the action potential uh, curve of them is like this. The A cell, the first cell, and the B cell. So, as you see, in all of the syncytium of our atrium, uh, the length of our action potential is equal. I mean the length of the action potential in the A cell is equal to B cell. So A cell is the first cell to be depolarized, and as you see, it is also the first cell to be repolarized. So repolarization starts from around the SA node again, where the other parts of our atrium is still depolarized. You see, again, an electric current is formed, which is somehow in this direction, exactly opposite of the lead 2. So here, we're going to have a negative repolarization wave. This is our stage 4. Right? And again, the peak of this uh, fourth stage is when we have half positive, half negative charges on the surface of our atrium. Now let's consider uh, our uh, ventricles, which is again simplified. As you see, you can see the base of our heart and the apex uh, in, with regard to our uh, ventricles. Like the atrium, first, all of our ventricles are polarized on their surface. We have all positive charges on the surface of our uh, ventricles. The second stage is when the electric pulse, pulse reaches our ventricles and it is depolarized from here, the left part of the the left part of our intermuscular septum, and again other parts are still polarized with a positive charge, right? So you see, we have a, an electric current from negative to positive, from base to apex like this, which is the same direction as the lead to. So the second stage marks a positive wave. So the first stage where we only had positive charges was on isoelectric line, and then on stage 2 we have a positive wave. But uh, remember that at the beginning and at the end of this positive wave, I mean this R wave, uh, the electric uh, vector is just against lead 2, and it is not the same direction as L2. For example, at the end of the uh, depolarization, uh, our vector is this way, you know, in this direction. So uh, it will be a, a negative charge, a negative wave. So uh, here we have two negative waves at the beginning and at the end of the depolarization of our ventricles. So what about the third stage? The third stage is again the same as atria when, when the depolarization has spread all through the ventricles. And again, we don't have any special waves, but on isoelectric line, this way. This is when our ventricles are depolarized and remain depolarized. Again, let's consider this a cell as the first cell which gets depolarized, and this B cell at the base of the left ventricle as the last cell to get depolarized. Here we have something in opposite of our atria. You know, the action potential curve of the A cell is something like this, and our B cell uh, depolarizes in this way. Mm -hmm. You see that, unlike atria, where all, cell, uh, all cells' uh, depolarization and action potential uh, duration was the same, here, uh, in the ventricles, it is the opposite. I mean, the first cell which depolarizes is the last cell to be repolarized. So, in the last stage, we got something like this. The last cell which was depolarized is the first cell to be repolarized. So our base and the B, and so our apex and the base of our left ventricle are the first ones to be depolarized and to be repolarized, and uh, the other parts are still repolarized. So guess what? Here again, we got a uh, electric current from negative to positive, which is the same direction as lead to, and again we have a positive 
repolarization wave called the T wave, you know? So if you want to number them, this was the first stage, the second stage, the third stage, and the last stage. So you see the repolarization wave in atria is not this, uh, is uh, negative, and the repolarization wave in ventricles are positive. Now, the next step to perfectly uh, understand uh, our electrocardiograph in lead 2 is to uh, examine the timing of conductive uh, system in cardiac conduction system in our heart which is depicted here. I'll show you how to remember this timing easily and, and this will really help you to understand the different timings of the electrocardiogram followed. You know, this is our SA node at the very first time, right? As it triggers time, it takes about 0.09 or 0 .0, for example, 8 seconds to spread all through the atrium. And it takes about 0.03 seconds to reach our AV node, right? We all know that uh, our uh, pulse is then delayed in our AV node so that it reaches this bifurcation of his bundle at the second of uh, point oh, point, uh, 0 0.16, right? It takes only uh, 0.03 seconds for this to reach all the subendocardial tissues, right? And reach here. So, uh, 0 0.19, 0 0.19 is where uh, our electric pulse reaches the last point, the last uh, area of our subendocardial tissue. It takes 0.03 seconds for the left ventricle because it's thicker to uh, spread through the muscular portion, so it reaches uh, the epicardium uh, at 0 0.22 uh, 22 seconds. And 0 0.21 seconds, it takes only 2, uh, 02 second, 0 0.02 seconds to reach uh, the epicardium of the right ventricle. So it takes something around 0.06 seconds for the depolarization wave to spread all through the ventricles, right? So that was the timing of uh, the conduction system in our heart. So uh, you see how this will help us to understand the electrocardiogram much better. Here we have our electrocardiogram depicted, our P wave, Q, R, S, and T wave with the PQ segment and ST segment. Okay, uh, what is the P wave? We already talked about that. P wave is the depolarization wave of our atrium. Uh, and what is the duration of this P wave? We talked about that already, that it takes around 0.08 seconds for the depolarization wave to spread through the atrium. So it takes something around... Point 0.05 to uh, 0 0.12 seconds uh, for the P wave to be depicted in the electrocardiogram. What is this PQ segment? We already talked about that. It's the third stage of the depolarization of our atria, and, it, they're very, and that's where our atria are all uh, depolarized. So the PQ uh, segment is, the, is when our atria remain uh, depolarized. And uh, how much duration does it take? Again, that 0 0.08 seconds, like the P wave, right? So, for the PQ interval, it takes around, for example, uh, 0 0.16 seconds, right? But I want you to do, uh, notice a very important aspect of this PQ interval. Here is where our SA node, which we talked about, triggers the electric pulse, right? It takes, or about, we talked about that, it takes about uh, 0.03 seconds to reach the AV node. So we can say that here on the electrocardiogram, here on the P wave, the electric pulse reaches our AV node, right? right? Our AV node delays the message for about... Uh, 0 0.13 seconds, uh, so that the sum of that will be exactly as the PQ interval. So exactly at the end of this segment, the, the atria are ready to be repolarized, so then comes the repolarization wave, which we talked about uh, already. And at the same time, uh, the message has reached a V-node already, and has been delayed enough, and is ready to enter our uh, ventricle at the 0 0.16 second. So here ex is the exact time which immediately our QRS complex gets formed. So, because the voltage of this QRS uh, complex is so high, our uh, electrocardiogram does not uh, contain any repolarization wave of the atria, any T wave of the atria, but only our QRS complex. So, what is the QRS complex? We already talked about that in the last stage. Uh, this QRS complex is uh, the depolarization wave of our ventricle in stage 2. How much does it take? We talked about that in the timing portion, boy. Uh, I just told you that it takes around, uh, zero, uh, around 0 0.06 seconds for all the ventricle to be depolarized. So, it takes something maybe uh, in the range of... 0, uh, 0 0.06 uh, to 0.08 seconds, right? Now, what about the ST segment? This ST segment is what we already talked about. This ST segment is the third stage where our uh, ventricles are all depolarized and remain depolarized. How much does it take? In order to help you understand, ST wave is exactly uh, the equal time as the PQ interval uh, on the electrocardiogram. So, it takes uh, around, again, 
15 or 16 seconds uh, like this. But what about the T wave? You know, we talked about T wave. T wave is the fourth stage of the uh, electric activity in uh, ventricles where uh, repolarization starts, and T wave is the repolarization of the ventricles. How much does it take? It takes around the same time as the ST segment, an average of 0 0.15 seconds, but with a range of 0 0.1 to, for example, maybe 0 0.25 seconds, right? That is also the T wave. So that was everything about the electrocardiogram, how its waves are formed, and uh, what is exactly the timing of the waves, what happens in the conductive system simultaneously uh, as the electrocardiogram is depicted. Uh, you are uh, now all ready to answer any questions which are related to this electrocardiogram, uh, and it's uh, just uh, waves, how they are formed, and uh, what their uh, duration is. Uh, you're not just going to memorize them, but also understand them carefully. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe us. Goodbye.